Before we begin with our next section, uh, I would just like to hold a moment of silence for Jerry Lorenzo. He passed away last night after a long battle with cancer. Jerry was a lifelong Somerville resident in Ward 4. He was the father of three young boys with Kerry Lorenzo. Jerry was a window clerk at traffic and parking for the city of Somerville, and he was a proud member of SMEA. So I just wanted to take a moment to remember him. Thank you. All right, now we will move forward with the next part of our event, our forum. Um, so I'm just gonna uh, introduce all five of the gentlemen we have up here, uh, and then we'll get uh, a two and a half minute statement from each of them. And I uh, wanna just let everybody know the statements are gonna be timed. Nate over here is our timekeeper. When you cross the two minute line, he's gonna show you a yellow slip of paper. And then when you run out of time at the two minute and 30 second line, he'll, give you, he'll show you the red slip of paper. Um, you guys get to do this to us at, at uh, public hearings all the time, so now we're gonna get you back and do it right back to you. Turnabout is fair play. So um, I'm just gonna uh, go down and introduce everybody. Uh, Matt McLaughlin, our uh, Ward 1 City Councilor. Jefferson Thomas J.T. Scott. Sorry, that's just written on my paper. Uh, Ward 2 City Councilor. Ben Ewenkampen, the Ward 3 City Councilor. Mark Niedergang, Ward 5 City Councilor. And Lance Davis, Ward 6 City Councilor. Uh, and again, I, I want to repeat what I said earlier, which is that Katiana emailed me to say she wasn't able to make it tonight because she had uh, another obligation. So she sends her regrets. Um, so that said, I would like to begin by uh, welcoming Matt McLaughlin to give us a, uh, his prepared remarks. Hi everyone, thank you for having me. Matt McLaughlin, Ward 1 City Councilor. I'm walking into this building today. I, it reminded me, it feels like only yesterday I was here for a forum last election cycle when I felt like the entire old boy political network was out to get me and trying to uh, make sure that I don't represent the community anymore. And fast forward to two years and we are now the political establishment in Somerville. So I think that's something very proud. Everyone in this room should be very proud of that. Um, we've accomplished a lot in the two years working together. I'm sure my colleagues will go into a lot of the details of that. I'm sure a lot of you already know about it. Whatever they say, I'm gonna take 1 11th of the uh, credit for that. Uh, but I wanted to talk about something else, uh, something that came up recently as I uh, went to the city of Lynn to speak uh, about an afford affordable housing issues over there. And they're going through all the same problems that we're going through in Somerville, except they're maybe 20 years behind or 20 years ahead, however you look at it. And I looked at uh, this crowd, about 150 people, very diverse crowd from working class backgrounds, all seen looking to Somerville. Uh, for the answers and seeing what we've done and saying we want to emulate what you're doing and I was very proud to be there But I was also very sad because I looked at this crowd and I was like this is what some of all used to be to me And we talk a lot about we don't want we want to save the soul of some of all We want to prevent losing our soul and in many ways We've lost a lot of our soul and the goal now is to maintain what we have and also build on into the future uh, so those are basically my prepared remarks. Uh, my priorities for the next two years, uh, something that I hope everyone would join me in on, is I see lots of times the people that need the most help are often the least represented in politics. And that's when I, what I did when I tried to get into politics, is represent the people who can't come to forums and can't come to public hearings all the time, but have really bad problems, have problems. Um, and that's expanded beyond some of them. My view has expanded beyond some of them with that as well. So my priorities locally is gonna to be to represent those people as well as I can, but also expand into other cities and get other city councils and other state reps to do what's necessary to address this affordable housing crisis. I think if your movement is not growing, it's dying. So we all need to work together and grow and look at the other cities and uh, lend a hand and export this political revolution that we've started. Thank you, Matt. And now uh, we'll hear remarks from J.T. Scott. All right, thank you. Um, I, don't, I don't have any particularly prepared remarks for you tonight. Uh, I am humbled by the support that I've received from a lot of the great folks in this movement and in my ward. Uh, 
it's got to feel amazing for y'all to look up here and see the faces that you put into office. And it's something, that, like you said, to be very proud of. Uh, and I'm honored that I'm, uh, barring some incredible sticker campaign, going to be up there serving for you uh, for another two years. Um, so what I want to talk about tonight is not necessarily what we've done, because what we've done is great and it's a start, but about what we need to do next and how I think we need to do it. The work we've done to set the stage, to start the ball rolling, isn't as simple as just pushing a rock off the top of the hill. We are pushing the rock up the hill every day in this city. The leadership that's set forth and the amount of control that the executive branch has, it's, it's hard to overstate how difficult it is to push against that. For a team of people, dedicated public servants, who have volunteered their time, who, who ran for office, who got up there, and then finding ourselves running into a wall over and over and over again with very limited authority. We are pushing that rock up the hill. And every time I see us win, it's not because Matt is particularly gifted of speech or Ben is particularly well informed or even Lance has a sharpest pen in the room. It's because the community, because the movement is organized behind what we need to do. So what we need to do is we need to continue to push back. We need to continue to push back against an executive branch that has consolidated its power in the last 15 years that obstructs at every turn the work for equity that this movement pushes for. We need to demand and do better. You know, Matt talked about Lynn, and it's funny because I was just looking at Lynn. Lynn is a city of about the same population who has $100 million more in tax revenue every year than we do, and an average income about half. Lynn, as a city, has less debt per capita than Somerville, and that's a city that was in receivership just a few years ago. The ruinous spending and priorities of this current administration are putting us in a terrible position to move forward. We have to make some substantial, significant changes in the way this city is run. Yes. And, and I think we all see, right, despite what maybe one of the runners of our local papers would like to think, the FBI is not coming, <laughs> right? Robert Mueller tells us that calling the cops and hoping to get somebody taken down on a technicality isn't going to get the job done. No matter how much verbal fencing I might do in City Hall and no, much, no matter how stalwart my colleagues might be, there is only so much that we can do unless we have the political will. So that is my request. Oh, I, I'm sorry, thank you, Nate. That's my request. <laughs> That's what I wanna see. I wanna continue to build the capacity in the neighborhoods. I wanna build the capacity in this city, and I wanna demonstrate the political will, and that means electing people at every level of this city government who have bold, not just pablum, bold and decisive will to act on this movement's agenda. Thank you. Thank you, JP. And then can we please hear from Ben Ewan Campen? Hello, everybody. I'm Ben Ewan Campen. I'm the Ward 3 City Councilor. Uh, thank you. So, uh, show of hands, who knocked doors in the 2017 election? God bless you. Now, since, since 2017, raise your hand if you've gotten involved since 2017. That's what I'm talking about. So I want to say a huge thank you to everyone here, but especially to the new folks who have gotten involved just in the last two years, because the most critical thing that we need to be doing in Somerville is to build the progressive movement, to continue to grow this thing. Um, so here's what I want to say tonight. The 2017 election, when I was first elected, was I think it's safe to say kind of a earthquake in local politics in Somerville. It was unexpected uh, by folks who had been involved in politics for a long time, and it fundamentally reshaped the political landscape in our city. And we have not only achieved a lot of policy changes, a lot of legislative changes, but we've kind of changed the conversation about what is possible politically. And I think we should all be incredibly proud of that. And I also want to say that a huge part of that election victory was because of turnout voter turnout. And there are a lot of people in Somerville politics who believe that 2017 was a fluke. 
there are a lot of people who have paid attention to politics for a long time, and they think uh, it was the afterglow from Trump, it was that Bernie came to Somerville, it was that the people were challenging up and down the ballot, so there was a lot of mail, and that was a fluke. And what we're going to go back to is what it used to be, 10, 15% turnout, same good old boys network running things. Everyone in this room knows that that is not the truth. If you were involved in these campaigns, like all of us were, you know that that turnout was the result of hard work. It was the result of bringing up issues, important issues that the people of Somerville actually care about and support, things like affordable housing, economic justice, immigrants' rights, environmental justice, making the campaign about issues that people care about, and then going out and knocking doors to bring that message to people who don't always pay attention. That is how you win elections, and that is how we're going to continue to win in Somerville. So what I want to say is what the, the power that we have in this room, you all know we don't have huge money, we don't have some kind of secret influence. What we have is the ability to raise issues and to go knock doors. So I just want to thank you and encourage you to keep it up because that is the way that we're going to continue this movement in Somerville. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Ben. And now we'll hear from Mark Niedergang, Ward 5, City Council. Good evening. First, thanks to our revolution, Somerville, for getting a bunch of progressives elected in 2017, for the pressure and support for progressive legislation, especially on affordable housing, and for endorsing me in 2017. I'm running for a fourth term on the city council, and before that, I was the Ward 5 school committee member for four terms. I never would have won election to either seat had I not had the support of the precursor to uh, ORS, the Progressive Democrats of Somerville. So I know personally how important the political work that you do is. I want to talk about some of the most important things that I've been a part of on the council, uh, along with many of my colleagues. As chair of the Legislative Matters Committee, I've helped to pass a whole bunch of important pieces of legislation, the real estate transfer fee, a strengthened condominium conversion ordinance, short-term rental ordinance, welcoming community ordinance, tree preservation ordinance, marijuana licensing ordinance, and facial recognition technology ban. Uh, I've done a lot of work on zoning, along with Councillor Davis as the chair of the Land Use Committee. Uh, I was the lead sponsor of the 20% inclusionary that raised the amount of affordable housing and big projects. And I've uh, introduced a set of amendments to the zoning overhaul, which will increase affordable housing for smaller projects if it's passed, which I hope it will be. And I've also done a lot of work in my ward, as we all have, providing constituent services, fighting developers, working with neighbors so that projects are as good as they can be, uh, given the, what we have to deal with. Coming up, I want to talk about my priorities going forward. One, more traffic calming, and we got to enhance pedestrian and bicyclist safety on our streets. Two, it's time to bring the parking revolution to Somerville. Three, I want to pass the citywide zoning overhaul, the comprehensive zoning overhaul, and then keep on moving forward on improving zoning. Four, continue to uh, pass more legislation, funding, and programs to support affordable housing. Five, as chair of legislative matters, we've got some things in the queue, and I'm sure there will be more things like demolition review ordinance revision, uh, sur a surveillance ordinance that uh, Councillor Ewing Campen has introduced, tenant protection ordinance, Jim Brooks, that Councillor McLaughlin has introduced, and the tenant right of first refusal. I'd like to get the Union Square development going before the recession comes. And finally, I want to strengthen environmental protection legislation and develop more green and open space. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mark. And now we'd like to hear from Lance Davis, City Councilor, Ward 6. Thank you, John, and uh, thank you. I mean, my, my comments uh, will, will echo uh, much of what you've heard, so I'll, I'll keep it as brief as I can. Um, uh, you know, first and foremost, uh, just thank you to everyone in this room, the organizers of this revolution. Um, my colleague from Ward 2 uh, invoked Sisyphus in, in our efforts uh, this term, but uh, you should have seen it before you all got around. Um, you know, with, with the help of, of uh, Van Alderman Niedergang, um, 
in 2016, getting that 20% inclusionary zoning change passed was uh, really was a, a, quite an effort. And uh, you know, as, as vice chair of the committee, he and I spent a lot of late nights on the phone. I, I received phone calls from some of my colleagues on the board uh, telling me to slow roll it. You know, we, we don't do it. It's, we're not ready. We're going too fast. And uh, I'm glad that I don't receive those calls anymore. Um, I, I'm, I'm so grateful to all of you who helped put these people next to me uh, on the on the council because it is it, it, it's such a different feel now um, it, than than it was before, and that really is a testament a testament to the the work that you all put in. As uh, as as Councillor Ewan Camp had said, knocking doors and talking to people is the most effective, especially in local politics, the most effective. Uh, tool and tactic you can use and and you all did it so well and I was so grateful to be uh, a part of that uh, to have your endorsement to be a part of that slate in uh, in 2017 and, and it was really was a thrilling night when we sort of sat back and thought about what we might be able to accomplish now with uh, you know with the different makeup of the of the, the council um, that said we still have challenges and we still do get pushback and, and you know despite having the the team that we do and I, I kind of like the sharpest pen in the room I, I, don't know if, I don't know if that goes on a bumper sticker or not but um, you know there have been there have been meetings when I've pretty much you know uh, symbolically locked the doors and said we're not leaving until we get this done and I'll rewrite whatever I have to rewrite and do it and thankfully we have people here that are willing to say okay yeah I'll sit I'll sit down and let's get this done um, but there are other things we've been trying to do that we're still getting we're still getting pushed back, uh, and so it's a, it's an ongoing battle, and none of it happens without the support of the community. Uh, what we have accomplished is is a direct result of, of your advocacy and your pressure and your work in the community with your neighbors uh, to, to build that support. So I look forward to uh, another two years. I guess if we're, we're, we're uh, you know, but for a sticker campaign <laughs> and, and trying to uh, to accomplish more of those goals. So thank you.